Paintball. Hello, welcome to Grand Old Team TV. I'm joined by Alan Myers. Alan, how are you? Good to see you. I'm good, thanks. Uh, yeah, it's been, uh, what was it, two or three months ago when we did the podcast? Uh, and we were full of optimism. Seems longer. Wait, it does, yeah. Well, it's already been a long season, hasn't it? Yeah, we were, and, that, and that's... Um, full of optimism, weren't it's, we? Yeah, it, it, and that's the mystery to me. Um, how we can, and it wasn't just, you know, a few people who maybe thought that, you know, thought differently than most. Yeah. Everybody, all of us in the summer felt it was going to be a really good season. And, and, and for some reason, and I'll be honest with you, I can't put my finger on why. Oh, I was just about to ask you, where's you it know, gone wrong? I, I was hoping. Know. I genuinely don't know. Because you look at the players and I, I think, I look at the players he brought in and I can't honestly say I wouldn't have bought him or wouldn't have bought him at the time. Yeah. You know, every player I thought, yeah, that's a good buy. You know, a lot of them were young and, 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 and some of them really experienced and, you know, in the likes of Wayne and, and Klassen and, and, and I just felt that, but, but, you know, I think the big thing is that people expect it to just happen right away. And when you've got, I mean, Neville was talking about it. We've been at a Neville Southall do tonight and, you know, Neville talked about when they brought seven players in, and I remember that. I'm old enough to remember. And it was difficult. And they were all UK players, you know, they were all British players. Whereas a lot of players, I mean, I've been around a lot of players in football who've come from different countries. And when you think about it, when you strip everything back and think about it, and imagine yourself going yeah. to work in Spain. Yeah, it would take you know, a little while to a get while going. To get to know, and, and they're only human beings, you know, they're not, they're not, they're not superhuman, you know, and, and, it, and it takes a while to get going. And I think maybe, hopefully, that's what it is. I think, yeah, that does get missed a little bit. Because it, it must be massive. You've got to bring your family. It's a new country, a new language in some cases. It must be tough. But um, in terms of, you know, obviously, what, what, what we're lacking at the moment, what, do, you, do you think that if, if Everton would have signed a centre-forward, we'd be in the position? Or would it depend on the centre-forward? So me and Brennan were chatting before, so who's our camera guy at Grand Old Team TV, and we were talking about, you know, if, if you put Giroud in that side, say someone like Giroud, who we were heavily linked to, would it actually be that different? Would he do the work you'd need a centre-forward to do in that team? I think what it does, in this case, in this specific moment, yeah. I think what a centre-forward would bring is a focus and a, and a focal point and, and something to, a pattern to go to. I don't think we quite know what we're trying to do at the moment. You know, I think, you know, people have made mention of all the number 10s we have, you know, and, and again, Neville was saying tonight, you know, about what is a number 10. And, and you know, we, we, we do tend to pigeonhole players nowadays. And, and there are players who are pretty much playing the same game, if you know what I mean. So, you know, we don't have a, a centre forward. I mean, and, you know, and I don't think you can expect uh, Calvert-Lewin to do that. He's a young lad who's just coming in and, and he should be alongside an experienced player, getting that help and getting that, that, that support. Um, and he's done very well, don't get me wrong, but, you know, he needs that help alongside him um, but with a bit of experience up top you know because a, a forward is not about just offensive play it's about defending it's about dragging your opponents away from your goal yeah, and, you and, off yeah and, and, and you know the likes of Giroud does a, a lot of that um, and, and he also is a threat in the air so, you, so you've got to get bring wingers in by, by definition really so it does change an awful lot. And I think, if, if obviously, and it will come to no surprise to anybody, but I think the big position we've got to get sorted in January is a striker. You know, that we, I think we have the players... OK, the centre-half positions worries me a little bit. You know, I think we've got a couple of Beijing players there. Um, we've got uh, Funes Mori to come back, I know that. Uh, we miss Seamus Coleman, I understand that. But I just think our back four needs to sort of... We, we need to seriously be thinking about it at this moment. Yeah, moving a little bit further on up the pitch, I wanted to touch you because I remember when we had the conversation for the podcast and you were talking about uh, your, I think you did the first interview with Wayne Rooney. Was that was that right? Yeah, was that right? Yeah, yeah first Wayne Rooney's first interview. television interview. So you, you you know you know you know a lot about Wayne. You're relatively familiar with him. How would you? I wanted to get your thoughts on how you kind of assess his first few months back at Everton. Well, I think he's. I mean, one thing and I never doubted it for a second is that he's put a hundred percent in every game. You know, you see him. Uh, running around everywhere, he's in sometimes too much. You know, he's trying to do too much, and I think you've seen that in certain games. Certainly, the early games, I felt he was grabbing, you know, uh, snatching at, at chances, and and you know, he was he was almost trying too hard to to score and and, and to be you know to, to to be the best player on the pitch. So I think once he settles down, it'll be a lot better. I think um, obviously with the off-field situation that's happened, yeah. you know, that's not helped, um, and I think. 
you know, it's probably not gone as well as he would have liked it to as far as the team, you know. So, you know, there's a lot of it. It gets back to the whole thing. And, and, and in football, you don't get time, but we need time. And I, I genuinely believe we need a bit of time to get to get those sort of things sorted. But what I do notice with Wayne is that most of the good passes and most of the great balls that we see on the pitch is usually coming from Wayne. And, you know, he's so, such a clever player. And I think that's something that we really need. We need players who are clever. We need players who know how to win a game. Yeah. And when I say that, you know, that means not lose it as well. Yeah. And, and you know, and I think that's where he, you know, and I think, you know, people will almost look at him because there was a little bit of doubt about him coming in and people were saying, is he, is he passed his best? And, you know, but... I don't. I think he's been up there with one of the best performers, performers really in the, yeah, this season, definitely. No, I agree, and just I'm just so desperate for it to work for me. We were saying, I mean, it, all he needs to do is lift like a league cup, and that would it would completely erase everything that happened when he was at United, wouldn't it? But um, talk about you know winning trophies. Uh, obviously, it's a night at the Winslow here for for Big Nev, um, who I know is a good friend of yours. Yeah. What uh, what are your kind of fondest memories of Neville Southall? Well, Neville was, you know, like I say, he was uh, he was just classic in many ways. Not just, I think the great thing about Neville was when I first came to the club, I was young, I was I was very inexperienced, um, you know, I didn't really know the job yeah. like I do now because uh, I've had a lot more experience since. Um, but the great thing about Neville was he treated everybody exactly the same. So it didn't matter whether you're the manager of the club, the chairman of the club or like me in a, in a media PR. And even the media and PR in those days was a new thing. You know, we didn't have social media. We didn't have, you know, the internet was called the internet. You know, it was like people referred to it as, oh, the internet, you know. And it was like, it, it sounds stupid now to even think it, but that's what it was like. Yeah, and yeah. everything was new. And, and the thing was, we were very innovative. And I remember Neville, we had Radio Everton at the time. And I remember Neville actually coming in and doing a show every week after a game. Mm you know, on Radio Everton. And for that sort of commitment, you know, um, for, a, for a player of his stature to come in and, and get involved with the staff, you know, we loved him coming down the tunnel when he arrived at the ground and even when he was going home. He'd always come in and see us and, and take the mickey out of us, you know. And he made you feel like... I'll, I'll never forget, Joe Royal was the same in many ways. And I'll never forget Joe Royal on the very first time I went away with the team. We went to Chelsea and he called me down from the back of the bus and asked me to sit in the front seat with him. And he said, just watch this, you know, yeah. and when we, and we and all our fans were up, you know, on the, on the lampposts and, and they were cheering us in and, and he knew what it meant to be an Evertonian and Neville was the same. You know, Neville was about doing the right thing. And that's, that's the key phrase for me with Neville. He always did the right things by you, you know, and, and on the pitch and off the pitch. And he was an absolute gen. Yeah, he was a madman at times, you know, he'd, he'd, he'd cause you all sorts of trouble. Um, I told a story tonight about you know when when Peter Johnson was going to decide who to have as next manager and you know and uh, Neville came in and called me a, a, an obscenity and, uh, and and then he lost his chance I think to be uh, the next manager of Everton you know for a temporary period but 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 that was Nev Nev was always the same as he was with anybody you know and 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 that was the beauty of him and what he what he what he gave you at the time at the club was a real stability you yeah. know and someone that you could go to and many times you'd be in the canteen and you'd be down because of something and 10 minutes after sitting with Nev you'd be back up and because football especially in the media side of it can be a really tough place you know because nobody really wants to do it yeah. you know and uh, and everybody wants it you know and and, it, and it's a really tough time but Nev will always make you feel better 